Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode three of the Terror Talks. My name is Jeremy, and today we're going to be talking about our local haunted house, Plantation Blood. But before we do that, we just want to thank each and every one of you for checking out our channel, for giving us your support. We cannot do this without you, the fans, and we thank you so much, and we hope that you will like, subscribe, comment, like us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as well as our YouTube. But... Enough of that. Let's dive right in to Plantation Blood. This is our local haunted house here up the road from us here in Augusta, Georgia. It has been there since we started going to haunted houses. This was our first year getting to visit Plantation Blood as we've never braved it before. In fact, the first few times we went there, we were a little bit unsure. We would drive by the place and we just weren't the most certain that this is the type of haunted house we wanted to go to. Reason being, when you ride up, there's not much to see. In fact, you pull up, and there's a giant fence around the entire property. I believe it's like 30,000, over 30,000 square feet of property. But when you ride up, you see this fence, and on the wall, it literally has the words plantation blood. There's not much to see. And you're not quite sure if this is the type of haunted house you want to go to because it doesn't look like much. And given our history with haunted houses, we were thinking the same thing. We were, if nothing but, skeptical. However, upon arriving there, we were pleasantly surprised. So when you get there, the first thing that you're going to do is you go to a little ticket booth outside of the fence line. This ticket booth, you have two options. You can bring a ticket that you purchased online, or you can purchase a ticket right there at the gate. They do accept credit cards, debit cards, yada, 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 cash as well. A general admission ticket to Plantation Blood is $25, and a fast pass is $45. Personally, if you ask me, on the nights I went, the fast pass is almost a little unnecessary because they do tend to get people through there pretty quick. There's not a whole lot of switchbacks. They do have the switchbacks set up in case it does take a while and there is a mass capacity. But in our experience of the two times we happened to visit this year, we did not need to spend the extra money for the fast pass. But that was just on our visit. If you feel that you need that fast pass, go for it. Plantation Blood is open every day until Halloween, all dates. Uh, after Halloween, they are open for some select dates in November. They open at 7.30 p.m. every night, and there is no specific closing time because their tagline has always been, we are open until the last victim. This is exactly how it sounds. They stay open until the last person in that line has gotten through that haunted house, but more on that later. So, you arrive, you buy your tickets. There's a nice lady at the ticket booth who just goes over a couple things with you with the big C right now, the big pandemic we're in. They do have some precautions that they are taking. Just a few, nothing too crazy. And they have happened to tie it in with their major theme this year. This year, the theme is Six Feet Under. They took that from social distancing. Keep six feet apart. So good on them for making light of the situation. We need a little bit of lightness right now with all this craziness going on. But she will just go over a couple rules with you. Make sure you maintain a six-foot distance between the group in front of you once you're inside. Um, Don't speed up to catch up to them. If you do speed up, someone is going to say, hey, keep some space. You're also going to go through a metal detector, or not a metal detector, but you will have somebody do a body scan. This is for your protection, for your security, for your safety. I understand it. I've been to several other haunted houses where they do the same thing. They can't have people with guns, weapons, you know, anything like that coming in there and just ruining up the fun for everybody. All it takes is one jerk to come in and just screw it up. So I understand that you will get scanned when you get there just to make sure that you are not posing a threat to anyone there. So when you get there, just leave your weapons, your your knives. If you happen to carry a gun, leave it in the car. If you happen to carry mace, just l- leave it all in the car. You are protected. This is a safe place. These guys know what they're doing. 
once you get inside the compound, this is where things change a little bit, and this is where our perspective changed instantly. Once you go through a little kind of, it almost looks like an outhouse from the outside. You go through it, and then you enter the compound. Once you're inside, you open up to this whole, like, new world, what they call plantation blood. They have a snack bar where they have all these different concessions and food and things that you can go get. They have little vendors set up. When I was there one night, I saw a guy was showing off some knives. There was a guy one night, he was selling cotton candy. They've got little vendors there. They have a stage where a band can play. These are just some of the little things they do out here in the Midway to get you interested, to give you a good time while you're waiting to get into the haunt and while you're maybe just waiting on a ride waiting on your friends, maybe you're just wanting to check things out and hang out before entering the haunted house. So they offer a lot of great things here in the Midway. There are some interactive characters who will run around and they'll talk to you, and that's always fun as always. So after that, once you get inside, and well, first you get into the line with the switchbacks. While you're waiting in line, as always, you have... Some people who are going to come through the line and try to scare the living daylights out of you. It works. I know our night that we went there, there was two people who came through the line, and they were scaring people half to death. They actually chased one of the people in my group, and she went running through the switchbacks to get away from this person. Luckily, there was nobody else in the switchbacks. The crowds weren't too big, so it wasn't like she was running into other people, but still, it's the fact she just went running. So that's outside. That's the midway, as we call it, of Plantation Blood. Lots of entertainment, lots of fun stuff for everybody to enjoy. It's a very, it's a, it's a very Halloween, yet family atmosphere. So then, let's talk about the inside of this place. Let's get down to it. The first thing you do before you even enter this house, it's always the most important thing to happen, is you are going to get the rules. There's always somebody waiting at the front door who will give you the grand rules of the house. As always, you know what the rules are. Don't touch the actors. They won't touch you. Don't use profanity. Don't go pushing and shoving. Just the standard things. No cell phones, no videotaping, no eating or drinking, all that fun stuff. Pretty standard rules. Nothing to worry about. After that, they send you on in, and at that point, you are on your own. I'm not going to spoil much of anything that happens in this house, and any spoilers that I do give are going to be more so you won't know where they're coming, but you'll know they're there. So when you get inside, the first thing we're going to talk about is the scare factor of this haunted house. The actors, the scare factor. It, it's a scary haunted house. I won't lie. I was jumping several times. My The first time we went through, I was jumping a lot. Second time, not so much, just because it was, it was a slower night. We found that out, and we spoke with some of the staff members there later on that evening. The less workers they have, it's going to be a little less crazy. On a weekend, it's a lot crazier, which is when we went the first time we went on a Saturday evening. So the actors are very much up to par. They know what they're doing in this place. They know how to elicit the scares that they want from you. They have good hiding places. They know what the different levels of scaring are. They know how to get the scares that they want to get. What I will say is there are certain areas where you might expect an actor to jump out, but they weren't there. So there were certain areas where they were lacking in the scares, and you expected a little bit more. But I'm not going to really kill the haunted house because of that. That's not a major reason to kill them because it's still a very good haunted house. These guys are very talented. These guys are very good. Now, is it up to our number one haunted houses that we've been to yet? Yeah, they're, they're, they're up there in terms of talent now. The one thing they don't do at this haunted house is they don't touch you, which is a little unfortunate because I think that that touch factor always is a little cool, but that's just me. But these guys are smart. They know what they're doing. They have immense talent, and that's what you have to have when you work in these haunted houses. You have to have a level of talent to produce 
different types of scares, whether that be psychological, whether that be physical, whether it be emotional, they have to try and get these scares. One of the things, for example, that happened on the first visit there, we went through with a group, and before we had gone through, I asked the group, I asked everyone their names, and we all we all exchanged names and such, but I told them after that, oh, you shouldn't have told me that, because I know what these actors will do if they find out what your name is. They will use that mess against you. Well, we got through about half of the haunted house, and we were fine. The halfway point of the haunted house, somebody got wind of one of our people's name, and they just attacked her the whole rest of the way through. They just kept calling out her name and scaring the living daylights out of her. It was awesome. They knew how to psychologically mess with this poor girl, and and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome, and I have to applaud them for that. I think they did a miraculous job, and in fact, the second time I went there, I spoke with the guy who actually kind of initiated the one who started that because we were just standing out there talking out in the midway, and he happened to come out. He wasn't in the haunt that evening. There wasn't much anything going on. They were closing down. And I told him about my first time coming through there, and I reminded him of the time, and his words were, oh, yeah, I was the one who kind of started that whole thing. I told everyone throughout the haunted house she was coming through. So we have to thank him for that, and we have to applaud them for that good use of the psychological scare. That's always important in these haunted houses. It's always awesome to see that type of thing in here. The second thing we're going to talk about is the set work in this place. Y'all, I have to admit, when I signed up to go here, I was very, very skeptical. I had heard mixed reviews about this place. I had heard a lot of different things. And the one thing I was worried about was we were going to walk into what could only be described as your typical backyard haunted house. Plantation blood was anything but. Now, granted, they didn't have anything too crazy there. Like, you weren't looking at, like, 50-foot tall buildings or anything like that. And it wasn't quite to the level of some of these other haunted houses we've been to. However, it was still a very, very compelling job on the set work. Every room that we went into, you were totally immersed. There were several scenes that you would walk through in this haunt where you were in one location, as in like you might be in a mansion at one point, and then next thing you know, you're out in an alleyway. And that was so impressive to us that this haunted house was able to make that happen. And we were, like I said, we were very, very, very... Uh, skeptical about this we didn't quite know what to expect we did not expect there to be this incredible attention to detail but there was incredible attention to detail in this place the next thing we're going to talk about is the special effects these guys knew how to use proper lighting fog other types of effects to achieve the ambiance that they were going for. They had lighting and fog all throughout, and they were able to make use of having no lighting at times or having extremely low lighting to really give you that eerie effect of complete darkness and really just kind of get under your skin. There were several times throughout this haunt that we would go into several dark hallways. And they weren't pitch black, but at first glance, you didn't know what you were getting into. It looked like it was pitch black. And me being the leader of the group on those times, I was very, very nervous. I was very much on edge going down those hallways. And I had someone behind me just saying, just look at the floor, look at the floor, you'll see where you're going. Just take a look at the floor, you'll know where to go. So that was very good to do that, look at the floor, and we were all fine. But then, of course, you look at the floor for too long, next thing you know, you've got someone jumping out in front of you because your attention's been directed elsewhere. Good distraction tactic. These guys know what they're doing in terms of special effects, too. One special effect I thought was very cool, I don't recall seeing it on 
the first night that we went, but it was more so on the second night. And even on the second night, it was actually a little bit delayed, so we didn't really get to see it. But there was like a fire effect where some fire like shot up in here. It was like on a bus or near a bus or something. It was very cool. It was a very cool idea, very cool effect. And we were very much looking forward to it, but unfortunately, we did not quite get a chance to experience it because we were moved past that. Um, there's a lot of actual animatronics in here. Not a lot of animatronics, but there are a couple of big ones, of course. You've got cars in there and such, and they're the cars that will light up and you know, try to attack your feet or take out your kneecaps. <laughs> and then there's also, like, some bigger creatures. I think one room we went down was a, like, a snake creature of sorts, something like that. I, I can't fully remember. It's been so long now. But it was very, very, very impressive. There was one room. I did not see this coming. You're walking down a hallway, and all of a sudden, we're standing there. The entire floor dropped at least a full foot. And I was like, whoa. And I freaked out because I was standing on it. And all of a sudden, I'm dropping a foot. And I just thought that was absolutely incredible that they could do an effect like that in a haunted house like this. And it was crazy because I didn't see it coming. Because I want to say just before that, there was a little ramp that kind of led you upwards a little bit. And it kind of took you uphill. And the next thing you know, the floor is dropping out from beneath you. I thought that was absolutely incredible that they could make that happen. I mean, th this place really did take the cake in terms of special effects and design. You can tell that they paid attention to little finite details that otherwise might have been ignored. And I believe, I'm not 100% positive on this, they are under new management this year. They, they have a new manager who's in charge of the place. And from speaking to him, he's got some big, big plans for the future. But you can tell he's very much into what he does. He really cares about what kind of show he's putting it on. And while we've never been there in the past, I do think that this new management has definitely brought on a positive vibe to Plantation Blood, one that was lost upon people in years past because there's been a lot of negativity circling it in the past and that was another reason we kind of veered away from this place all right and so with that we're going to take a short little break we're going to let you have a listen to their commercial and just give them a chance to get their ad out there but we will be right back after these messages thank you <laughs> Here on episode three of the Terror Talks, we are talking about Plantation Blood. My name is Jeremy. When you last heard us, we were talking about the set design of this amazing haunted house and their special effects. Now we're going to talk about the length of this haunted house. Now, I'm not going to lie. The length of this haunted house is, if nothing, but kind of average. Um, there's not, it's not a very long haunted house. It doesn't really take a whole lot to get through it. That being said, every step of this haunted house is not some boring, you know, 30-minute walkthrough either. It's a good haunted house. I'm not going to say it's horrible. But it's just, 
not as long as you would probably like it to be. Now, that being said, it is some 30,000 square feet, maybe more than that. I can't remember the exact dimensions of it, but it is a large haunted house, and they have made a very good use of the space that they have at their disposal. However, it, it almost leaves you wanting more when you get towards the end. You go through several different buildings throughout it. Uh, I think one of them is actually a house. I think one of them is a warehouse kind of deal. You go outside. You go inside another building. You go in a little swampy type area. They've made a very good use of the space. It's just there's not as much as you would hope there would be. And that's the only downfall for me is I kind of wish it was a little bit longer. That being said... It's not a horrible haunted house. It's not a bad haunted house. It's a very good haunted house. It's a very good atmosphere. It's a very good storyline they're trying to tell. We just wish it would be a little bit longer, or at the very least, we wish there was more to do. We feel that there's a lot of potential for this haunted house, but it's lacking in that it's just the one haunted house. Most of these attractions you go to nowadays have one or two maybe two or three haunted attractions with them. This is one of the oddballs that has one. That being said, we've been to several others that only have one attraction. In fact, all the ones we've reviewed on the channel thus far only have one attraction. Nightmare Dungeon only has one house. Mad World only has one house. Plantation Blood only has one house. All good haunted house as well. Mad World is the exception to that rule. But... <laughs> Listen to our last episode to hear about that one. Other than that, it's a good haunted house. And having less than, you know, less than two haunted houses, only having one, doesn't make it bad. It just leaves you wanting a lot more, which is exactly what this haunted house does. Because you get to a point where it kind of just stops, and you're just like, where's the rest of it? And unfortunately, that is the rest of it. And the end of it, the climactic part, is, in all fairness, a little anticlimactic. Which can be said about several other haunted houses we're going to talk about on the channel this year. But once you get towards that end, it almost feels like there's this big build-up, and it's building, it's building. You're being scared at every corner. And the last scare just doesn't really deliver how you think it would. Now, for someone like me, this isn't saying much. When I go through these houses, I'm very observant of little details throughout. So I'm looking to see, hey, is there someone hiding here? Is there someone hiding here? Is there someone hiding over there? I'm being very observant. I'm using my eyes for that. And I'm kind of listening, looking around at my surroundings. I'm looking at what the end of the haunted house looks like before I've gone in there. So when I'm getting close to it on the inside, I know, hey, we're about to be at the end. For someone who doesn't do this so well, then it's a little bit more unexpected. It's a little bit better for them. For me, the ending was just kind of, eh. I won't lie. The last couple rooms of the haunt, the back half of the haunt, was almost a little bit too dead for me. There was a lot of dead spots where not much happened. And that, that that's the only critique I have, is that there was a few dead spots in there that could have been better. And we talked about that when we discussed the actors of this place and the way that they scare. You know, there's a couple dead spots, and on a really slow night, we went on a Thursday night our second time, on a really slow night like that, then it can be really dead, and there can be a lot of dead spots. And that can severely affect your experience at the haunted house. So with that being said, we definitely have to encourage you to go to Plantation Blood. This is a great haunted house, and if you are listening and you are an Augusta, Georgia local, Augusta, Georgia native, we definitely have to encourage you to go to this haunted house. And we're going to stand up on our soapbox here a little bit and say these local haunted houses are the cream of the crop right now, and they need your support. 
Now, that being said, I'm not saying only support the local ones. Support ones that aren't local. Take a day trip and go to a couple haunted houses that are maybe all in the same town, and you want to go to a couple different haunted houses. Take a day trip up there and support them. But start local. Start with the ones that are near and dear to your community because you never know if they're going to be there next year. We feel pretty confident that all the ones we have visited so far, they are going to be there next year. None of the owners or managers we've spoken to seem to have any alternative plans for the future. But you never know. This year, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Who knows what next year will bring? Next year could bring about something that makes it so the haunted houses don't open, period. So get out there before the Halloween season is over. Give them your support. Give them their last hurrah for this 2020 season because they don't know what's going to happen next year. They don't know what's going to happen for the rest of this year. Several of these haunted houses we've been to will do special Christmas events. They will do St. Patrick's Day events. They'll do lights on tours. There's different things with every haunted house. Go out there and support them while you can because we don't know what's going to happen next year these haunted houses need your support and for one like plantation blood this is one that drastically desperately needs it as it is a local haunt granted we have seen people come from great lengths to visit it but at the heart of it it is still local it is local to us so it is very personal to us and very important that you support them because they need that stability to be able to move forward in the coming years. So with that being said, make sure you give your utmost support to these haunted houses. Some information for you about Plantation Blood. As I said earlier, they will be open every day until Halloween. So from the time you're hearing this video right now, we are publishing this video on a Friday will be open every single day until Halloween, and it will open up at 7.30 p.m. That's right, 7.30 p.m., folks. Get there. If you're going on a weekend, try to get there early because there will be a vast crowd when you get there. When I went on a weekend, it was later in the, later in the evening, and it was on a Saturday. And it wasn't overly crowded, but there was a bit of a crowd. As I said earlier, I wouldn't waste the money on the Fast Pass because I don't think it will be that crowded. But then again, I haven't seen that type of crowd before. So use your best judgment when going. Go there. They will be open every day until Halloween. And then once we get into November, I believe there are two weekends that they will be open. Just two. So if you miss it before the Halloween season you still have a chance before they close up shop for the year. General admission tickets are $25. Fast Pass is $45. If you are military, medical, or a first responder, all those people that we are seriously thanking for doing what they have done just this year alone, but what they do every single day, if you are one of those people, you get in for $20. This is also the ticket price, if I read correctly, the price on a Sunday through Thursday. This could be wrong, but that's what I read online. So Sunday through Thursday, the tickets will be $20. But then also, if you are first responder, medical, military, $20. Come out to Plantation Blood. Check it out. They are located at 4127 Wally Avenue in Augusta, Georgia. When you get there, it's going to look like it's not much. Trust me. I've been there. I've seen it. Looks can be deceiving. That's something we look at with every haunted house we go to. The first impressions are important. And when you get to one and you don't really see much, it can be very underwhelming. Don't judge this place based on its look during the day, and don't judge this place based on its look during the off-season. When you get there in the evening on a night when they're open, you will see fog coming from everywhere. You will see lights from over the fence, which kind of gives you that slight glimmer of hope of what lies in store. 
as I said before on the last video, don't take everything that we said as word of law. We don't know everything. These are our personal experiences, our personal opinions, as we venture into these various haunted houses across this year, across the South, but eventually across the nation. So take that with what you will. Go there. Use your best judgment. Give us your opinion. Let us know if we missed something. Head on out there and shoot us a message and say, hey, heard your review. I think you were wrong on this. And tell us why. We'd love to talk to you about it. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If you happen to make it out to any of these haunted houses this year, be sure to go take pictures, tag those haunted houses, but also tag us because we want to share your photos on our pages. We want to be able to show how we connected you to a haunted house. If you go to a haunted house, tell them you heard about it through the Terror Talks. Give us a little bit of a publicity boost there so that we can get our foot in the door with these haunted houses. They love to hear where people came from and how they heard about them. So when you get there, tell them you heard about them through this new channel called the Terror Talks. We would love that. That's going to be the end of this video today. My name has been Jeremy. Be sure to check out Plantation Blood open every single day until Halloween. Check out all our videos if you like what we did here today. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, like us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We will see you next time on The Terror Talks.